Boy, oh boy. The price of freedom is steep. Hello everyone. XJW is still fading here. And I wanted to make a video today about a recent article I found. I want to give a heads up that we will be discussing some uncomfortable topics in this video and viewer discretion is advised. If you're an XJW, I'm more than certain that you know that Watchtower has a problem with pedophilia. It has been happening for decades and Watchtower isn't trying to solve the problem. The reason why this is such a big problem is because they have a two witness rule, which makes it difficult for people to come out and report their abusers. The two witness rule requires that there has to be a confession of at least two witnesses to a crime. On top of that, the victims have a difficult time reporting the abusers because they are family or close friends. This makes the situation for the victim hopeless, and these disgusting acts go unpunished, sometimes for years and sometimes forever. The Watchtower organization has been brought to court many times over incidents in their congregations, and each time it has been brought up, they refused to budge on the two witness rule. Gary Bro, who is the helper to the service committee, has been quoted saying, we will never change our scriptural position on that subject. I'm not sure about you, but if I were involved in an organization and children were being taken advantage of, I would do everything in my power to make sure that it never happens again. Clearly, Watchtower could be less concerned. This brings us to the article I want to go over today, which is focused on Frederick McLean, who was a Jehovah's Witness. He also went under the name James Fitzgerald when he lived in Seneca, South Carolina. An arrest warrant was issued for him in 2005, and he was added to the U.S. Marshals Service 15 Most Wanted Fugitive list in 2006. He had been on the run for 16 years and was wanted by the San Diego Sheriff's Department in California on multiple counts of sexual assault on a child and was deemed a high risk for assaulting young girls. His family learned his secret before the cops did, and they confronted him in May 2004. In early November of this year, he was found dead in his house in Seneca, South Carolina, by a neighbor that went to check in on him. All those years and he did not get turned in, even after his own family knew he had assaulted children. You may be wondering why, and I have the reason for you. It would bring reproach on their God's name, Jehovah, and it would make the organization look bad by getting authorities involved. They attempt to take care of the issue in-house, but the problem is never solved, and more children get abused. Authorities estimate that during his years on the run, McLean used numerous aliases and also lived in Poughkeepsie, New York, and Anderson, South Carolina. Because of his crimes, authorities are concerned that there may be other victims out there. It's sad to hear things like this have happened, and even sadder to know it's still happening. And even after all of this, Watchtower still will not change. What does that say about their organization? What does that say about their God, Jehovah? In fear of bringing reproach on God's name, they did just that. I believe that's all I have for this video. I apologize for the inconsistent uploads that I've been doing with my videos, and hopefully in the future, when I have some more free time, I'll be able to upload more. Thank you so much for your support. You guys have a good one, and take care.